Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. This will be another slightly miscellaneous video and in this video I wanted to look at the new functionality inside of Unreal Engine 4.22 utilizing the editor widgets. Now this is something that I've been really interested in um, since things like the Blutilities were included and that's because I've come from a background in Unity and that's one of the things that made editing and working in the projects very very uh, fluid and simple was having the ability to manipulate the environment that you're working in to really fit the project that you're working on. So this is something that's really cool. Uh, obviously the 4.22 at the moment is still in a preview version, but I find it's very stable. So you will need to download that to follow along. Um, and what this will let us do is I'm just going to show you by the end of this video how we can create a very, very simple menu, something that we can plug in down here and start uh, interacting with the actual editor. So this isn't going to be a runtime thing. So first of all, before we do get started, just wanted to go over a couple of things. This is a this is a completely empty project. Uh, I've made some changes to the background, so hopefully it's easier to see. And I have one class, which is the BP underscore cube. All this class is doing is very simply holding a cube static mesh, just so that we've got something to look at. And this was done just because it wasn't worth including in the actual tutorial itself. So to get started, what we want to do is go to our blueprints folder or any folder in the project, right click in here, and we're going to go down to this new option here, which is the editor utilities. Now, if we select this, this will give us a new asset. It's very, very similar to a widget blueprint. Uh, at the moment, I don't know the actual naming convention for this, but I'm just gonna go uh, EBP, so editor blueprint underscore uh, test. Okay, so if we open this up inside of this, like I said, this is gonna look very similar to widget blueprints if, if you've done any work with the user interface stuff inside of Unreal before. We have our designer, so our canvas, and this is going to be, uh, rather than the canvas on the screen as you would have imagined it previously, this will be the canvas size it will take in one of these windows over here, and I'll show that very shortly. And then of course we have our graph over here, which is where we're going to do all of the functionality again like in widget blueprints. So the very first thing is I'm just going to add a button. I'll drag in a very standard button here, uh, just change the size of this and we'll give it some text. Okay, so we'll come back to this in a moment, but uh, just wanna show how we can actually get this into our viewport now. So if we hit compile, make sure that we save this. We're gonna go back to our content browser, find the EBP underscore test, right click on this. And what we want to do is this option here, the run editor utility widget. And this will open uh, for you, probably open somewhere in the middle of the screen because I've already docked one in testing. Uh, mine is docked down here. And we can see we have our very, very large button inside of our editor. So I can already see that I'm gonna to wanna to change the size of this a bit uh, and maybe change the size of the text as well. So I'll just change this down to something like 20 and we'll give this the, uh, the light font. I'm gonna change the text to say spawn object. Okay, so again, just need to knock this down a little bit more, so make that something like 15. And I'm also gonna change the color just so it's a little bit more viewable, or visible as a word. Uh, so if we just go back in now, we can see this looks a little bit better. Uh, this really doesn't need to be too clean. This isn't something a lot of people are gonna see. This is really just a utility for ourselves when we're creating things. But now that we have a button, we can come in here, we can go to the graph. Uh, I'm just gonna name these as well, just get into a good habit of uh, naming things inside of widgets. And I'm just going to call this one button spawn. And I'm doing that because I will show another few examples in this video. And uh, it can get a bit confusing when you just see button 56, 57, and so on. So if we just give this a name, we know that when we use this functionality, it will be for the spawn button. I want to get an on clicked event. And on clicked, all I want to do is spawn actor from class. So like I said, this is going to be a very simple example. The main thing was just to show how to get these up and running. Uh, but I also wanted to extend on that a little bit just to show some very basic rudimentary kind of implementation that you can do of these. So with this node available, I'm just going to go down to the BP underscore cube that I have. That's why I had that ready. We'll split the structure pin uh, because I just want to promote the transform to a variable. And I'll just call this one spawn location. Okay, so we have our spawn location, and the reason for this is just so that we can actually make some changes to this. So I'm going to get the spawn location and then set the spawn location. And the spawn location, I'm just going to split the structure pin again so we get our float variables. I'll split the structure pin here. Uh, I'm going to plug in the X and the Z, and then I'm just going to take the current Y value and add 100 to it, so float plus float. So if we just add 100 to this, plug that into the new Y value, just drop that down there. 
hit compile. So this is going to start at zero. So this is going to spawn a cube in the middle of the world, which is there. Just zoom in a bit. And then of course, every time after it's gonna add a hundred and we can just so that we can actually see very quickly how we can add cubes into the world. So all of these, of course, are gonna be separate objects. And what we're going to do is go in and add some more functionality now so we can actually show how we can start quickly uh, utilize these functions and start using them more as helper functions rather than something we could have just done anyway. Although to be honest, something like this, although very simple, is gonna be a really cool way to create things like maps on certain logic so you can spawn things in without needing to place them by hand, without needing to do things in the construction script and the blueprint. We can start adding uh, buttons and editor utilities specifically to lay out the um, set up of a maze or something in a level. So this alone already isn't actually completely useless. Obviously, this is just a very simplified version of something that would be useful. So what I want to do, the reason I've set this button up so nicely is I'm just going to drop this down, hit copy, select the canvas and paste. And we now have another nice looking button. We're just going to give this a name as well so we know what this is doing. And I'm going to call this one destroy objects. And I always prefix this with the word button, just so again, alphabetically, it's going to show why I want it to over here. So if we get another on clicked event call here, uh, all I want to do this time is I want to, now a simple thing to do actually, I'm just thinking, um, kind of making this up as I go along, we could get all objects of type or get all actors of class. We could get all of the cubes that are in the world um, and just delete them by type. Now that's very, very simple, not too useful I suppose in a way. So instead what I want to demonstrate is that we can actually utilize the editor functions that are already built into the engine uh, and we can get things like the selected objects. So let's get the get selected actors function. So this comes under scouting and we can see here we have get selected actors. If we plug this in and we're just going to do a for each loop. So for each of these selected actors we're gonna use, obviously this is the destroy button. So we're gonna pull off of here and say destroy actor. Okay, so if we come back in now, I'm just going to, because I'm gonna be picky, come back in, change the text here to say destroy object. So now we have our spawn object and destroy object. Now I know what you're probably thinking, you can just hit delete and that will get rid of the cube. But this again, just demonstration. So if we now press on destroy object, it will take what we had selected in the editor and obviously destroy that and it's being removed from the world outliner. Uh, and of course we can do this on multiple objects and we can hit destroy. So again, very simple, but that's another way. Uh, the important thing here is that we can actually use this get selected actors, return everything that we have selected and we can manipulate those. Now this is gonna get a little bit more complex if you wanted to do things like just manipulating one, uh, you'd either need to make sure that you only have one object selected and obviously pull off of here and get the zero index array um, or you can kind of maybe hard code it so that if the user has multiple selected, only the first object that they selected is the one being manipulated or the last object they selected or something. Uh, that's gonna come down to your preferences and uses. Um, and obviously this is just buttons so far. So I'm just gonna sh show one final thing. I'll add in a simple slider. We'll just make this a little bit bigger. Um, and if we come over here, I'm not gonna bother renaming the slider. We only have one of these. So on value changed, what I want to do uh, we can just use this again, the get selected actors, and we'll just show how to scale all of these. So in fact, we want the for each loop as well. And I'm going to set the actor scale. Okay, so we're gonna set the scale of the actor. Uh, the way we want to do that is of course, remember these sliders are in a range of, so we've got our value between zero and one. So it's a um, normalized value that we're working with here. An easy way that we can do this is we can do a vector times a float. And in fact, before that, we want to do a float times a float. I'm gonna multiply this by, uh, let's just say 10, because I think 100 would be a bit too big. So that's now gonna give us a range of zero to 10 that we can ma manipulate the scale of the object. We're gonna default this to one, one, and one, and we're gonna plug that in to our actor 3D scale. So again, very simple, but this is gonna get, hopefully, the ideas across. So that now means that we can select all three of these, and we can start moving the uh, the slider here and we can see that the scale is being applied to each of these cubes uh, now one thing is i thought that the on value changed worked whilst you were actually sliding this so we could see it in real time but it seems it only happens when you release the click but i mean that's fine it still shows us that we can utilize this slider to control a multiple of these objects so like i said this is going to come in 
probably a lot more use if you wanted to speed up the process of getting just certain objects, say that you start placing lights around, you decide midway through development you didn't need all of those lights. If you've got them by actor type, you can search by that type of actor, by tag, by name. Uh, you can quickly grab all of those. You can set them to be selected, you can delete them. So it saves you going through the outline of things like that. Um, and as I start going through more tutorials for the games here, I'll try and start implementing these in a way to actually speed up the development of games as well, rather than just using these very random kind of small examples. But like I mentioned, this is only really the main thing I wanted to get across is just how easy it is to get these uh, working now, uh, how much more efficient this is probably going to be than the utilities were. And it's going to be nice to have our own dedicated user interface sections to quickly spawn and uh, to quickly manipulate and get into the developments. So I'll leave that video here for today. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around if that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.